just uh, here to talk to you about the arrest of a police officer. I don't like to stand in front of you and do these, but from time to time we need to do it. Uh, last night, uh, Officer Deborah Young, who uh, was most recently assigned to the Investigations Division, uh, she's been a police officer here since September of 08, so about six and a half years, uh, was arrested on three counts of petty theft and a count of uh, official misconduct. Basically, we got a tip from another officer that she was supposed to be working off-duty work. As you know, a lot of officers do that. They work off-duty. Um, you know, people need our services. And she was scheduled to work at some various apartment complexes. Uh, and each shift was a four-hour shift. And she was supposed to be there for four hours. And after this tip and uh, following using some investigative techniques, we, uh, we followed her for a while. And uh, for a period of about... Um, just about a month. She, uh, we saw her six different times working in apartment complexes. Five of those times she left early. She was scheduled to be there four hours. She left earlier than four hours. Uh, sometimes she would leave earlier than others. Um, she put in to be paid for four hours each time that she was there. She was in fact paid for four hours each time she was there and cashed the checks. Um, of those five times, she basically was overpaid by $306 by my math where she should have, uh, you know, had she been paid for the actual hours that she was there. And the charge of official misconduct is based on the fact that uh, once you work secondary employment here, there are some things that have to be done. There's a form that is filled out for the sheriff's office for our secondary employment uh, purposes uh, where you uh, certified that you work somewhere, where you work, how long you work. And she turned those documents in as well with the full hours on there, not the hours that she actually worked. Um, so as a result of that, um, Look, we, we get these complaints, we take them seriously, we follow them up. Um, and in this case, we found that the complaint uh, was valid. And I know it's, it sounds like you know, it's, it's $300 worth of, of time, but you know, if you were out paying that, you would expect somebody to be there when they're supposed to be there. And I uh, just want to make sure that everybody understands that when we see these kinds of things, we, we take them seriously, we investigate them, and we hold people accountable. So I can try to answer any questions if you got any. There's not an awful lot to it, yes, sir. So she was, it was four or five different apartment complexes she had secondary employment? It was three with. different apartment complexes. There were six times, actually, that, that, she, worked, that she worked during this time period. Um, she left early every, all six times. On one of the times she left early, though, and then there was a call went out of the apartment complex, so she had to turn around and go back to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She left, so six out of six, she was leaving early. Okay. And, and how many years? The, sorry, so last month? Um, between the, like the end of January and it looks like the last time was uh, February 23rd. So I guess it's a night shift of some sort? Yeah, and the hours often at these kinds of places are, are, are a little bit flexible and apartment complexes allow it to be, but they want you to be there at four. You know, they, they like for it to be a little bit varied because then the people don't know when the police are going to be there. This, this was another, I'm sorry, I'm right, but this was ahead. another officer that turned her in or one of the actual companies? No, it, it was an officer that, that, that told us they didn't think she was, uh, that she was working like she was supposed to. Did the companies ever come forward, or, or did they? Well, we interviewed the companies after. They they don't you know they I don't know if they I don't know how they monitor their employees there. Um, I, I, it looks like they just paid based on what they turned in as on their schedule that they worked. Do you have the monetary amount of money? Let me, let me oh, get sorry, it. I just tried to. Um, is there, was there any other history problems with Miss Young? No, I, I checked on that. You know, there was a. Uh, she had a complaint that, that ended up just being a supervisory letter, so it was like a rudeness kind of thing. She had, uh, I think, a, like an incident with a traffic crash or something, but she didn't have any discipline. How much money were you looking at? Uh, a total of $306 over those incidents. And, and, and I know that, but you know, what we saw was it was happening every time. Mm -hmm. And so how long do you let it go before you cut it off? Exactly. Um, you know, we know that she's not doing what she's supposed to do, and I probably could have let it go for a year, and we'd be talking about $3,000. So. What does that mean for the reputation for the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office for you? Well, Someone look, we, like we, we, uh, we don't like to see one of our own doing something they shouldn't do, but as far as the reputation of the Sheriff's Office, I think the important part is, is that it was a member of the Sheriff's Office that brought this to our attention, mm -hmm. and it was members of this office that investigated it, and it was members of this office that arrested her and held her accountable, and that's what we do every time we, we get one of these. How what quickly did she leave? What was sorry. the quickest amount of time that she stayed uh, let somewhere? Let me see if I can tell from this. Um, this, this, this doesn't break it down enough for me. Um, I, I believe people told me an uh, hour and a half or two and a half. Do you, do you remember? She was supposed to work four, four hours. Usually she two, two hours. So, so it, she, she usually about, uh, she, she probably overall did more than half of what she was supposed to. She was paid a total of 560 and she was overpaid by 306. So, oh no, that was one complex. I'm sorry, let me, let me redo my math here. 
560. She probably left about half the time, most of the time, maybe slightly less than half the time. Do we know what apartment complexes she worked in? Um, Canterbury Gardens, um, Kendall Court, and Ansley at Hart's Road. Any other questions? Yes. And she worked for the department um, for six years, you said? Uh, she, since September of 08, so about six and a half years. You know. how, how long has she had uh, secondary employment? Well, it, all of our officers, once they are off probation, which is after one year, are eligible for secondary employment. So I don't know how, I, don't, I didn't look to see if she's been working the whole time, but they're eligible after a year. And the follow-up question to that is, what will happen now with her employment at the sheriff's office? Well, uh, you all know you've been doing this like me for a little while. There, there, are, uh, there, are there are contractual issues. There are a lot of ways these are dealt with. Since there was a felony charge in this one, which was the official misconduct, um, uh, the options for her are a little different than if it was just a misdemeanor. Um, we can place them on, on suspension without pay. She, however, chose to voluntarily go on leave without pay. So she is not working and she is not being paid at this time. She's on voluntary leave without pay until this uh, criminal part at least is resolved. And, you, you know, the integrity unit reports directly to me, and they investigate criminal matters. And we keep those separate from administrative matters. Administrative matters are violations of our rules, our policies and procedures. The criminal matters are just violations of the law. And for a lot of reasons that, that, that deal with very legal, strict guidelines that everybody has, we let the criminal investigation go, and then we do the administrative investigation. So to answer your question, right now she's home on leave without pay. Mm -hmm. The criminal case will work its way through. The state attorney's office has that, and, and they'll decide what to do now. We make the arrest, and then they, they decide how to prosecute it. And once that has gotten to a point that's, that is complete or that we can, then internal affairs will pick this up, and they will look at the rules and policy violations, and then we'll, we'll make a determination based on that. You mentioned one of those apartment complexes had a call after she left. Which, which I, complex was I, that? I, Can you I tell me what kind of call that was? I don't know. I just told them that, that was and I don't know. Time. No, I really don't. I'm sorry. They, they told me that that happened one time, but I don't know which one it was. Was there an injury to anyone at that point? That I, I don't know. Same? I don't know what the call was. They just told me she got a call and went back. All three of the department complexes are where there's Canterbury Gardens, Kimber Court, one off Harsh Road. Um, a lot of criminal activity. Um, what, I mean. Well, I don't know. I, I wouldn't, I don't know that I'd quantify how much criminal activity they have. But problems. places that have more problems are the ones that hire the police. I mean, it's like the, 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 the clubs and whatever. The, you know, they, they hire police because they need them. I mean, they don't hire them. I mean, they want them to be there. That's what they are. And what date did she start doing this secondary job? Or this I don't have when she started it. Um, we started it. looking at it at the end of January after we took the plan. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.